guys, welcome back to my channel where the gnomes live. This is Sharon Oyella, and this is part two of a three part series that I'm doing all about this walnut. So I just uploaded a video before this one, and that video uh, will show you how I add in windows, how I hinged the walnut, how I added in these floors. These actually are pull down floors, and I also have a fold out floor here. And how to do the build-in fireplace and a chimney and all that great stuff. So if you're interested in seeing how I did all of this, then you will go to that video, which will pop up at the end of this one on the screen, or you can just look in the timestamps below. In that video, I'll also show you how I made the stand and the mushrooms. So in this video, part two, I'm going to show you how I made all this little tiny furniture. Some of the stuff is so tiny, <laughs> like these chairs right here, the tiniest chairs I have ever made. And they're actually not that difficult. Yeah, the only difficult part would be uh, the tininess of them. But other than that, it's pretty simple to make. So I got a couple of chairs, a dining room table, a little hutch with some furniture in it. And the tiniest bed I've ever made too. A little pillow on there and bedspread. And again, the most difficult part of this is just that it's so small. And we got a couple of these easy chairs as well. In this video, I'm also going to show you how I made um, a larger version of this chair, just for the sake of filming and uh, showing you in better detail how I do things. But they're constructed the exact same way. And also in the video is a rug, the fireplace, and a basket of wood. As always, guys, there are detailed timestamps in the pinned comment below where you can jump around the video as freely as you wish and just get to the parts that you want to see or you can watch the whole thing. At the end of the video, I'm going to put all this furniture inside that walnut and see how it works out. So I'll see you at the end for that. And then I'll also tell you what's coming up in part three. Let's get started. All right, my friends, the first thing I'm going to show you is how to make a little stone fireplace. And this is the one I had originally made for my walnut that I'm showing you now. But then I changed my mind and I did a build one or built in one instead. And that link is in the pin comment below if you're interested in seeing that one. But here we'll just do a simple fireplace in case you want to make one for your walnut. So I'm using um, cardboard from a cereal box, paper cup trays, and tacky glue. I just cut out a little piece from the cereal cardboard and now I'm going to paint it black. And then I'm going to glue in my paper cup trays around it. So here I am just breaking it down into tiny little pieces. And these will be stones when they're all dry. When the glue is all dry, it will look like stones. So I'm just gluing them around that shape, enclosing my fireplace. And I didn't film this part, but I added a little piece at the bottom that, that sticks out a little bit. Um, you can make that bigger, of course. Now it's all done, I'm going to paint in some flames with red paint and yellow paint. And just a quick note, guys, because I noticed when I was editing, I didn't mention this. Um, when I was all done, I did add a little bit of black paint around each individual stone just to make them stand out a little bit more. And the fireplace needed a basket with some wood. So I split a toothpick into four pieces there, very tiny. And the basket itself is made from twine that I did uh, soak in tacky glue and then I wrapped it around this cap in the shape of a basket. Once that was dry, I was able to paint it, put in some tacky glue, add in my firewood, and there we go. We've got a simple little basket with some firewood. And another simple thing to do is make a rug for the walnut, and you can make this any size. This is just a piece of fabric that I cut out. And to keep the edges from fraying, I turn it over and I cover the back side with tacky glue. And just leave that dry and once it's dry you have a little rug that's a little stiffer and also it won't fray. On with the furniture and we're going to start with these easy chairs or wing back chairs and I made two tiny ones for the walnut and then I made a larger one just for the sake of filming just to show you that you can make them any size. So there's the larger one and the tiny one that goes inside the walnut you can see the difference in size and they're both constructed the exact same way. The larger one is made with cereal cardboard and its legs are made from uh, your basic dollar store twine. And the two tiny ones are made with paper cup tray and the legs on those ones are made with grains of rice. 
And just to be clear, guys, before we get started, there's no reason why I chose grains of rice or a twine. I just chose them because I wanted to see how they how they would turn out. I knew the twine would work. I wasn't sure how the rice would turn out, but both turned out great. So depending on what you have on hand or what you want to use, feel free to use one or the other. I'm just showing you how strong these legs are. I can bang them on the table <laughs> and hit them with my little tool there and nothing happens. But it's a solid little chair, even though it's just made out of paper and twine. And this one is just as solid as the first one, and that's grains of rice and paper cup tray. So I'm just showing you that they are solid when they're done. So this is the basic shape that you want. That's the seat, and this is the back. And where I drew those lines along the side there, those are going to get folded inward to create the sides of the chair. I'll show you that in two seconds here. So first of all, I'm just filing off the uh, part of the cereal box that's been painted. So when I glue something to it, it will stick. So I folded up the seat and now the sides go in. And it doesn't matter, you can make these any shape that you want to, like I said. So there's no pattern to follow. You just look at the shape and uh, follow that uh, in any size that you want. And I'm going to peel apart a um, paper towel so I can get one layer. And I'm going to break it down to the size of my little chair there. And I'm going to cover my chair with this. What this does is makes the chair much stronger and it'll hold its shape better. So I'm just painting on the glue and then I add my paper towel right over top and then paint that paper towel over with the glue. And once you have that all painted on, then I just stick it on uh, this little styrofoam piece with pins holding it in the shape that I want it to keep. Once it's dry, that sh it keeps that shape forever. Once that paper towel is dry, it's really strong. So now I'm going to make the legs out of twine. And you can break this twine down. It depends on how skinny you want the legs. On the chair that I'm working on right now, I left the twine as it was. But if you wanted to have skinnier legs, then you can just pull the twine apart and use one layer or two layers, it's up to you. But here I'm just putting the tacky glue on, I'm gonna rub it in with my fingers, and I'm gonna add a little bit more glue there. And I'm twisting it as I go, twisting and making sure that glue is saturated the entire piece. And then I'm just going to dry it under a fan. Once it's completely dry, it's pretty stiff. I'm gonna make it stiffer even, I'm just showing you here, it's a little bit bendy still, but that's okay, it's uh, stiff enough to work with. I'm gonna use my nail clippers, cut off the ends and I'm going to make the legs longer than I want and same as the rice too I leave it long it's just much easier for you to leave them long and cut them down as you um, test out the chair once it's dry otherwise you're gonna you might end up with a chair that's leaning to one side or the other if you try to cut these legs short to begin with so where I cut them with the uh, nail clippers that edge is a little bit squished so I'm just unsquishing them, making them more round. Now I'm adding tacky glue. I'm going to cover the bottom of the chair and a layer of tacky glue and then I just stick those legs right in there. Stand them up in the glue. So now you want it to uh, leave it to dry. You want it to stand straight up as it's drying. So now that glue is dry. So you want to trim little bits at a time and keep checking and making sure that the chair is standing straight up, up and down, and there's no lean to one side. But that's what I mean. You want them long to start off with, and then you can just trim them down as you go. Once you get them trimmed down, then add some more tacky glue. So I'm painting glue all around the bottom of the chair, and then I paint each leg with the glue as well. And you'll find that it'll be dry after 20 minutes or so, and it's, you know, it's pretty stiff. But if you leave it overnight, then that glue cures and it's super solid. And now what I'm doing is I'm going to line the chair with another piece of twine. So the seat, the outside of the seat, I'm, I'm adding the twine all the way around and twine around the back. And that just makes the chair look a little bit thicker. And I didn't film this part. Uh, I did glue another piece of paper towel to the very back of the chair just to give me a nice even surface to paint on. So it wasn't very even when that first layer of paper towel was dry. It was kind of bumpy back there. So I took a one layer of the paper towel, I, I separated the layers, and then I just placed it on the back of the chair and used my fingernail to help guide uh, around it and just pulled away the excess. And there I had a piece kind of shaped to the back of my chair. It doesn't have to be totally even. 
uh, as long as I get a, a good smooth surface there. Then I glued that on, let it dry, and then I went ahead and painted the chair. And now I'm going to make the paper cup tray uh, chairs. And these ones I didn't need to add any paper towel to. Once I added the glue on there and let it dry, it held its shape just fine. So the paper cup trays are super solid when your uh, glue is dry. Uh, I didn't need to add anything else to them. So I'm just going to saturate the entire front and back with the glue. And then I'll stick it on my little styrofoam piece again using pins to hold that shape and let it dry to stick it under a fan. And for this chair, I'm using those grains of rice, like I said, I found um, just cutting the one end off with my X-Acto knife, I got a straight edge to glue to. So you want to glue those straight edges to the chair itself, and then the other end you're gonna trim down once everything is dry. So again, I'm adding my tacky glue, and I'm going to stick each grain of rice in place. Again, the straight edge goes down, and the longer or the pointier ends stick up. And now I'm going to stand it up on this little tool here so that it will dry without the glue running from side to side. You want to stand it straight up so the glue dries straight. Okay, now this is dry and the legs are ready for trimming. So again, I'm going to use my nail clippers and trim those down little bits at a time and keep checking to make sure this chair is standing straight up and down. Once I got it all trimmed down, then I add the tacky glue again around the edges of the rice and then along each grain of rice itself and let that dry. All right now we're going to make a teeny tiny little bed and again you can make this any size you want. I'm working with cereal cardboard and some twine for the head board and the footboard. This is a solid little bed once everything is cured and dried. It's very very solid. It's not going to fall apart. You could bang it around or anything and it's going to stay together. So let's get started. So first I'm going to determine the size of the um, bed itself, which is very tiny in this case. And once I've figured that out, now I can make the headboard and the footboard out of the twine. And you saw me breaking down the twine there. You can make this as thick as you want, so you can leave the twine the way it is, or take off a couple layers and do it that way. So I've already cut a little piece of cardboard, like I said, and I, I need that headboard and footboard to be as wide as that little piece of cardboard is. So that's, I've already checked it. And so I can pin this in place and leave it dry. Once it's dry, it's gonna hold this shape forever. Once it's dry, I was able to check the height that I need. I left those legs extra long so I can trim down as I needed. Once I got the height figured out, I put tacky glue in the very bottom of the legs and I'll slip my cardboard piece in between the twine and then the pins go on the outside of the twine and everything gets squeezed together with those pins. So once the glue is dry, uh, the twine and the cardboard becomes one piece. And it's pretty solid. I know it looks fragile, but it's actually pretty solid when it's dry. A little extra glue between the twine and the cardboard I just added there. And now that it's drying on top of the styrofoam, it'll, it'll make a little film, like the glue will make a little film. So I was just breaking that up and pushing it into the cardboard and into the twine. All right, so that's dry enough to, to add the other side now. So I'm going to um, fix up the footboard here, just trimming it down to the height that I need. I'm gonna to have to keep checking here and trimming down as needed. And when I'm ready, I'm gonna add some glue, just like I did for the headboard, I'm gonna add some glue to the twine and then flip the um, headboard and the cardboard over and put it in between the footboard twine. And then again, pins on each side of the twine on the outside and squeeze that together. So once it's dry, it's one piece. Adding a little bit of extra glue and just pushing it into the twine and into the cardboard. All right, so here it's dry and I've already added the middle post to the footboard and I'm going to add one for the headboard. So this is a piece of twine that I'm not going to twist. I'm adding the glue and I'm flattening it out to make like a metal um, flat board type thing. And then I'll let that dry nice and flat there. Let it dry under the fan. Once it's dry, I can trim down to what the height that I need. And it's just going to be glued in between the cardboard and the top railing of the headboard. Very tiny, 
glue on each end, top and bottom, and then just slide it into place underneath the railing and then along the cardboard piece. And then extra glue, of course, once everything's in place to make sure it never comes off of there in the future. And I'll just let that dry. Oh, I'm, I'm pinning this on each side so it doesn't fly away when I put the fan on it. <laughs> I did lose this a couple of times. <laughs> All right, so it's ready for painting. So I'm doing that. And now I'm adding a piece of fabric to the cardboard to make it look like a bedspread. So glue all around the cardboard and then a little piece of fabric on top, gluing down the sides. And this is a little pillow I made out of white fabric and tacky glue. I'm just going to roll it up until I have the thickness that I want for a pillow. And I do glue this on because like I said, so tiny, easy to lose. And again, I can't stress this enough. Using this technique, you can make a bed any size that you want. A couple years ago, I made these dollhouse size hutches and they're very simple to make. So I figured using that same formula that I used to make these two, I'm going to make a teeny tiny one and it worked out great. The only difference is I didn't add the door faces for the cupboard or the drawers. That is a detail that you could definitely add. And if you're interested in the larger hutches, that video will be linked in the timestamps below. Like I said, we're going to use a simple formula to make the hutch. We're going to start with the back wall and the back wall can be any size that you need it to be. And I'm just determining how big I want that back wall to be. So it depends on how much space you have to fill. So once you have the back piece uh, cut, then you make two L shaped pieces for the sides. And this is going to be the start of your hutch. So you need three pieces, the back wall and then two L shaped pieces for the sides. And the top of the L uh, part is where the counter piece will sit on. So again, that height will be determined by the doll that you're using. So again, that can be any height that you need it to be. So now we're going to construct my teeny tiny little hutch. I've got my back wall and these are my two L shaped pieces and they're long because I'm going to cut them down. You want to make sure to file off any paint first before you get started. And now I'm just cutting the L shaped pieces down to be the same height as my back wall. Add your tacky glue along the outside of the wall piece on each edge of the wall piece. And we're going to stick those L pieces up along the side there and then use pins to hold them in, in place. So once you have your side pieces on, then you add some extra tacky glue on the inside. Make sure those pins are holding everything pretty tight. And then you can put the uh, fan on it and let it dry. And here's my dried piece. And now I'm going to test it, make sure it's the right size for in here. And I figured those L-shaped pieces were a little bit too wide, so I'm just trimming those down. All right, now that I have all that figured out, I am adding the shelves. So I put in the two shelves, top and middle, and then the counter piece goes on top of the L part. And that's just simple. You just cut those pieces and then put tacky glue along three edges and just stick them in place. Once those three shelves were dry, then I added the um, front of the bottom. So where the drawers and the cupboards would go. And you'll notice that this front piece or this front panel is sunk in a little bit. So part of the L is sticking out just a teeny tiny little bit. And then I put uh, pins all the way around so it doesn't blow away when I put the fan on. And once that's all dry, then I just take my toothpick and go around, make sure I don't have any globs of glue sticking out anywhere. And then I can go ahead and paint it. And I decided to use burnt sienna uh, for the paint. And then on top of that, I did add a little bit of shine and glitter using a paint or uh, nail polish and just for a little bit of interest on it because it looked a little bit too dark. And to add the plates that you saw on the top shelf there, I used the heads off of teeny tiny little pins. So these are metal pins that I painted on top of the styrofoam first. And then I, once the paint was dry, I cut off the stem. And then I stuck them in tacky glue. Just put tacky glue along that shelf and stuck those in. It was a little bit of a process. You don't have to go through all that. You can use uh, pieces of paper or maybe some uh, little pieces of rice. Just cut those and then stick them in. And here I'm showing you that on the bottom shelf, I added two candlesticks by using the same pins. Just turn them upside down and left a little bit of the stem on. 
but those are kind of details that you can play around with and I'm sure you'll come up with something fantastic. Let's move on to the dining room table and I made one larger and one smaller one. So the smaller one goes with the hutch and the larger one I just made for the sake of filming. They're constructed the exact same way using the cardboard from a cereal box and the legs are made with twine. So let's get started. We're going to cut a circle out of the cereal cardboard box and it doesn't have to be a perfect circle because I am going to outline this with some twine. So I'm just going to get it as straight as I can using my scissors. But if it's a little bit uneven, I'm not going to worry about it. And I'm going to outline that circle with my twine. So I've added the tacky glue and making sure the tacky glue is completely covering the twine. And now I can wrap it around my circle, cut off the excess. And once I have it all in place, I'm going to leave that dry. And once it's dry, I do check it over and make sure that that twine is sitting properly. So I just kind of fix it with my tweezers here, kind of flatten it out going around in the circle. Once that's done, I go ahead and I add the legs exactly the same way I showed you how to do with the chair. So you prepare the legs ahead of time out of twine, and now I'm just adding them into the tacky glue and I'm gonna let them dry. Once it's dry, you can trim down those legs as needed. And like I mentioned earlier, the tinier table is for the walnut that I was working on. And for that table, I made tiny little chairs. Yeah, these chairs are so small. And I, I did film that, so I'm going to show you that in the next segment here, how to make those tiny little chairs. But like I said, these can be made any size that you want to make them. So going super tiny, I cut a little piece out of the cereal cardboard box. And the one side is round and the other side is straight. So the round part is going to be glued into the twine, which I've already pre-shaped using tacky glue, the same way I showed you how to do with the bed. Now adding the tacky glue around the cardboard piece, and that's going to be placed into my pre-shaped twine. So I'm just making sure it's straight, so I have to pick it up there and get it pushed in there properly with my tweezers. And you can see I've left the twine extremely long there because it's just easier to work with this way and I can cut that down to size after. And this wasn't necessary. I had actually made these chairs before I made the bed and I didn't realize how sturdy they were going to be without adding any braces. But I did make a tiny brace that I put underneath the seat of the chair there before I added the front legs. And that did work and it, it did help with the stability while it was drying. But like I said, it wasn't totally necessary. Um, you saw how I made the bed and I didn't need any braces underneath that cardboard uh, when I glued it to the twine. Anyway, I'm just uh, pinning this down now and going to stick it under the fan and let it dry. And I'm going to add the front legs. I won't do that on camera because you've already seen me do that on the um, chairs that I made. Uh, here I just kind of opened up the top of the chair part with the back of my paintbrush because I want to stick a little... Um, post in the center just like I did with the bed. This one I'm going to, I broke down the twine into one layer and then, you know, added the tacky glue, let that dry and cut it down a size and now I'm adding it to my chair. And I'm going to let that dry. Once that's dry, I'll go ahead and I'll paint the chair. So all that's missing is the little characters that are going to live in here with this furniture. And at the time that I was ending this video, that character wasn't ready yet. But she's going to be available very soon. So watch my channel or look in the pinned comment below. By the time you're watching this, it might be ready. And the link will be there or it will be popping up on your screen. Until then, guys, I hope you enjoyed this video. And as always, if you've made anything from watching one of my videos, I'd love to see it. Post pictures on my Facebook page where the gnomes live, or tag me on Instagram, Oyella underscore crafts. Both those links are in the pinned comment below. Thanks so much for watching, and we'll see you super soon.